The seeds of the train organization were sown in the early 2000s, a period marked by the rapid expansion of the casino industry in the United States. The heart of this illicit enterprise was Fuang Trang, known colloquial as Pai Gao John, and his sister-in-law, Fan Tran. Their foray, foray into the world of gambling fraud was not an overnight development. It was the result of careful observations and understandings of the vulnerabilities in casino operations. Fuang, a Vietnamese immigrant, had a background in gambling that preceded the formation of the organization. His experiences in various casinos laid the groundwork for what would become one of the most sophisticated cheating rings in history. Van Tran, who later married into the family, brought her own insights and skills to the table, proving to be an instrumental figure in the orchestration of their schemes. As the organization's ambitions grew, so did its need for a network of collaborators. The train organization began to recruit insiders from within the casino world. These recruits were not randomly choice were not random choices. They were carefully selected based on their roles within the casino and their susceptibility to bribery or coercion. Dealers, pit bosses, and even security personnel were drawn into the web, each playing a pivotal role in the execution of the scams. The recruitment process was as covert as it was persuasive. Potential recruits were approached with offers that were hard to refuse, often involving large sums of money. For some, the lure of easy profit was enough to sway their allegiance. For others, the train organization used more subtle forms of persuasion and manipulation, exploiting vulnerabilities in personal situations. A key factor in the success of the train organization was the rigorous approach to training and discipline. Fuang and Van understood that the smallest mistake could lead to exposure. They organized extensive training sessions for the recruited dealers where the art of the false shuffle was perfected. These sessions were conducted with military-like precision and secrecy, offering taken, often taking place in nondescript locations away from the prying eyes of the law. The training wasn't just about mastering the techniques, it was also about instilling a sense of discipline and loyalty among the members. The organization operated with a strict hierarchy and code of conduct, and members were expected to adhere to these guidelines meticulously. The organization's early successes were a combination of skill, discipline, and an underestimation by the casinos of what they were up against. Initial operations were small-scale, targeting lower-profile casinos to test and refine their techniques. With each success, their confidence grew, as did their ambition. Over time, the train organization's operations became more sophisticated, they started targeting higher stake games and more prominent casinos. Their methods evolved to keep pace with advancements in casino surveillance and security. The organization's adaptability and willingness to innovate were central to its prolonged success. At the core of the train organization's operations was the false shuffle. This technique, although simple in concept, required a high degree of skill and precision to execute without detection. Dealers who were either part of the organization or brought into the fold were trained to perform shuffles that appeared legitimate, but actually left prearranged sequences of cards or slugs in the same order. This manipulation of the deck was central to the entire operation. To ensure the effectiveness of this technique, the organization meticulously planned every move. They used detailed strategies to determine when and how to introduce the slug into the game. This often involved complex signaling between the cheaters and the complicit dealers, ensuring that everyone was in sync without arousing suspicion. Like we previously mentioned, the recruitment was a critical part of their operation and they targeted vulnerable or corruptible casino employees. They were brought into the secret trainings where they were taught the false shuffle. The trainings were rigorous, ensuring that each participant could perform the shuffle under the stressful conditions of a live casino environment. The organization maintained the network of these trained dealers across various casinos. This, this network was constantly rotated to avoid detection, with members being sent to different casinos and different times. The organi organization also kept a close watch on the performers of their members, ensuring that the quality of their work remained high and consistent. To coordinate their cheating activities, the organizations employed advanced communication methods. 
Members were equipped with hidden earpieces and microphones, allowing for real-time discrete communication during the games. This technology enabled them to adapt their strategies on the fly, react to unforeseen circumstances, and signal when to bet high or low, depending on the order of the cards. Moreover, the organization utilized surveillance technology to monitor casino operations and security measures. This helped them in understanding and evading the detection systems in place. Their investment in technology was a testament to their commitment to staying ahead of casino security advancements. Apart from the technical skills, the train organization's members were adept at psychological manipulation. They used various distraction techniques to divert the attention of both casino staff and other players. These tactics included having members engage in loud conversations or displaying eccentric behavior to draw attention away from the cheating activity. In addition to distractions, they also employed strategies to manipulate the perceptions and actions of casino staff. By building rapport with certain employees or deliberately losing on some occasions, they created an illusion of normalcy, further making their illicit activities. Or further masking their illicit activities, I mean. As the operations expanded, the train organization continuously adapted their strategies. They kept a close eye on advancements in casino security and adjusted their methods accordingly. This adaptability allowed them to operate for years without detection, hitting casinos across the U.S. Their ability to adapt was not just limited to their cheating techniques, but also to their operational structure. They frequently changed their team compositions, operational timings, and targeted games to stay under the radar. This dynamic approach was key to their long-term success in an industry that is constantly evolving to catch cheaters. The train organization's cheating operations were not confined to a single area or a handful of casinos. Their activities spanned across numerous states in the U.S., including notable gaming centers like Las Vegas and Atlantic City. This widespread operation was indicative of their ambition and organizational capabilities. They strategically chose their targets, focusing on casinos where they believed the chances of detection were lowest and where the potential financial gains were highest. The choice of casinos varied in size and reputation, from smaller, less prominent establishments to some of the largest and most well-known casinos in the country. This diversity in their targets showcased the organization's confidence in their methods and their ability to adapt to different environments and security systems. Over the years, the trained organization illicitly won millions of dollars through their cheating schemes. While exact figures are difficult to determine, the sheer number of casinos impacted um, and the duration of their operations suggests a significant financial toll on the gambling industry. The operation's lifespan, which extended over half a decade, underscores the effectiveness and stealth of their methods. From its inception in the early 2000s until their eventual downfall in 2007, the organization managed to evade, capture, and continually refine their strategies and, and expand their reach. The organization consisted of a large network of individuals, each playing specific roles within the cheating scheme. This network included key organizer, organizers, recruited casino employees, and players who would win the bets. The size of the network was a critical factor in the operation's success, allowing them to simultaneously target multiple casinos and rotate members to reduce the risk of detection. The involvement of a significant number of people also demonstrated the sophisticated hierarchy and management within the organization. Coordination and secrecy were paramount, and the leaders ensured that operational knowledge was compartmentalized, limiting the exposure of the entire network. Initially, the train organization's operations were relatively simple, but as they gained success and confidence, their schemes became more complex and ambitious. They started incorporating more sophisticated technology and refining their communication and coordination methods. This evolution was partly a response to advancements in casino security and partly a result of their desire to increase their winnings. The organization also showed an ability, like we mentioned, to adapt to changing circumstances. When one method became risky or less effective, they developed new techniques or shifted their focus to different casinos or even different games within the casino. This constant evolution made them one of the most adaptable and enduring cheating rings in the history of casino gambling. The beginning and the end for the train or organization came when their pattern of winning started to draw attention. Casino security teams, always vigilant for signs of cheating, began to notice that certain players were winning unusually large sums of money with a frequency that defied normal odds. 
This anomaly prompted several casinos to initiate internal investigations. Using advanced surveillance technology, casino security started to analyze hours of footage, focusing on tables where the, where the suspects play. They were looking for any signs of cheating, unusual behavior, or collusion between players and casino staff. These initial investigations were the first st steps in unraveling a complex web woven by the train organization. The major breakthrough in the case came when a member of the organization, caught up in an unrelated criminal matter, offered information about the cheating scheme in exchange for leniency. This insider's testimony provided law enforcement with valuable insight into the organization's methods and extent of their operations. Armed with this information, federal and state law enforcement agencies, including the FBI, joined forces with casino security teams. This collaboration was instrumental in piecing together the full scope of the train organization's activities. The combined expertise and resources of these agencies allowed for a more comprehensive investigation. With sufficient evidence gathered, law enforcement agencies coordinated a series of raids and arrests across multiple states. These raids were carefully planned to capture as many members of the organization as possible and to seize evidence critical of the prosecution's case. The arrests were a significant blow to the organization. Key figures, including uh, Fong Trang and Van Tran, were apprehended effectively dismantling the leadership and operational core of the scheme. The scale and success of these raids highlighted the seriousness with which law enforcement treated casino fraud and the effectiveness of interagency collaboration. The public exposure of the Tran organization's activities were extensive. Media coverage highlighted not only the sophistication of their cheating methods, but also the vulnerabilities in casino operations that they had exploited. This played a key role in alerting the casino industry to the need for more stringent security measures. The case also captured public interest due to the dramatic nature of the cheating scheme and the uh, pending law enforcement action. It served as a cautionary tale about the potential consequences of engaging in such large-scale fraudulent activities. The fallout for the members of the train organization was severe. Many faced charges ranging from conspiracy and cheating to money laundering. The trials that followed revealed in detail the workings of their operation painting a picture of a well-organized, disciplined, and ruthlessly efficient criminal enterprise. The convention, convictions and sentences handed down serve as a strong deterrent to others who might consider orchestrating similar schemes. They also underscored the resolve of the justice system to prosecute organized gambling fraud to the fullest extent of the law. Following the coordinated raids and arrests, members of the organizations, including its key figures, were formally charged. The trials of the organization members were complex and drawn out, given the intricate nature of their crimes and the number of individuals involved. Prosecutors presented detailed evidence, including surveillance footage from casinos, financial records, and the testimony of cooperating witnesses, including former members of the organization and casino employees. Defense strategies varied among the accused, with some opting to plead guilty in hopes of reduced sentences, while others maintained their innocence and contested the charges. The trial shed light on the sophisticated methods used by the organization, their meticulous planning, and the extent of their deception. Key to the prosecution's case was the testimony of former members of the organization who had turned state's evidence. Their insider accounts provided a detailed view of the operation's inner workings, from the recruitment and training of casino dealers to the execution of the false shuffle and the subsequent laundering of the illicit pro pro uh, proceeds. Excuse me. The evidence presented in court was comprehensive. Surveillance videos played a crucial role in illustrating how the scheme was carried out. Financial records traced the flow of money, substantiating the scale of the fraud. The combination of technological evidence and personal testimonies painted a compelling picture of guilt. The sentences handed down varied significantly among the members of the organization, reflecting their level of involvement and cooperation with the authorities. The ringleaders, including Trang and Tran, received substantial prison sentences, underscoring the gravity of their crimes. The repercussions of the trial extended beyond the individual sentences. The legal proceedings brought to light the vulnerabilities in casino operations and prompted a broader discussion on the need for more stringent security measures in the gambling industry. The case became a benchmark for the prosecution of organized gambling fraud. 
Moreover, the case raised awareness about the potential for large-scale organized cheating in casinos, leading to legislative and regulatory discussions about enhancing casino security and monitoring systems. The legal proceedings against the train organization thus had a lasting impact on the industry and law enforcement practices. The revelation of the train organization's sophisticated cheating scheme served as a wake-up call to the casino industry. In the immediate aftermath, casinos across the country and internationally ramped up their security measures. This included enhancing surveillance systems with more advanced technology capable of detecting subtle signs of cheating that previously went unnoticed. Casinos also started implementing more rigorous background checks and continuous monitoring for their employees, especially those in critical roles like dealers and pit bosses. The training program for these employees were revised to include techniques to identify and prevent not just false shuffles, but a wide array of potential cheating methods. One of the most significant impacts was the rapid advancement and adoption of sophisticated surveillance and monitoring technology. Casinos invested heavily in high-definition cameras facial recognition software, and advanced data analysis tools. These technologies allow for real-time monitoring of gaming floors and more. Effective tracking of suspicious behaviors or patterns. Additionally, the integration of AI and machine learning into surveillance systems began to take precedence. These technologies offered the ability to analyze vast amounts of data from casino operations, helping to identify irregular activities or anomalies that could indicate cheating or other fraudulent activities. The train organization's case highlighted the need for better collaboration and information sharing within the industry. Casinos began to work more closely together, sharing information about known cheats and suspicious activities. This cooperation extended beyond individual casinos, to include gaming commissions, regulatory bodies, and law enforcement agencies. Industry forums and conferences started focusing more on security issues, providing platforms for professionals to exchange knowledge, strategies, and technological advancements. These collaborative efforts marked a shift towards a more unified approach to combating uh, gambling fraud. There was a fundamental shift in the approach to dealer training and casino floor culture. Training programs for dealers and other casino staff became more comprehensive, covering aspects of fraud detection, behavioral analysis, and ethical conduct. Casinos recognized the importance of not just training their staff in technical skills, but also in fostering a culture of integrity and vigilance. The casino also implemented stricter internal controls and audits, assuring that their own practices were not inadvertently facilitating cheating. The emphasis was on creating an environment where both staff and patrons could be assured of fairness and transparency in all aspects of casino operations. The train organization's case had a lasting impact on gambling regulations and policies. Regulatory bodies took a more active role in overseeing casino operations setting stricter standards for security monitoring. There was a push for more comprehensive legislation governing the use of technology in casinos, both to prevent cheating and to protect the privacy of patrons. The case also led to discussions about the ethical and responsible conduct of gambling operations and prompted a reevaluation of how casinos balanced the pursuit of profit with the need to ensure fair play and the welfare of their patrons. Let us know your thoughts on this case in the comments section below. Uh, what is your experience in a casino? You ever caught anybody cheating in a casino? Let us know. And of course, before we go, we got to thank our sponsor, Skillshare. Unlock your creativity and learn new skills with Skillshare. Join millions of members in our community exploring thousands of inspiring classes. From design to business, cooking to coding, um, video editing, script writing, anything you need to launch your own YouTube channel, you can learn at Skillshare. Use the link in the description and join today. And of course, don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you like our video, subscribe to the channel, the bell notification button to be notified of future videos, and you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see.